the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Well, hey, God Love bless it. everybody that I am now live. Hey, I, I fixed the streaming video too. So uh, what what I do is, like I said, though, I'm, I'm not gonna break this, you know, come on and off on, on live video, but I will go ahead and do a edit <laughs> to, to start all over again. So since I'm gonna do an edit in everybody, and, and I, I just got started uh, for everybody, hey, God bless you. This is the day the Lord has made. I shall rejoice. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. And I got a great topic today. And it's all about the fact is that how we minister to people and, and deal with the conflicts that occurs between us and the world is, is, a, is recognized that we're in a spiritual warfare. And what I brought in a scripture that I did not put part of my slides, but I wanted to bring up because it came to my mind is the second Corinthians chapter 10. And before I go into those slides, Brother Addison and anybody is listening or will listen to the video is that I, as I was discussing with somebody yesterday and it, it's going to come out on this scripture here. And I, and I, I want you to remember that if you're going to have discussions with people in this world <laughs> during this lifetime, if they want to stay at the cardinal level of discussion, if they want to sit there and base and reason things out based on the outward, based on the physical laws, based on those things, based on the outward appearance, you need to be able to, I, I really do recommend that you sit there and say, if you want to stay at the cardinal level, we really don't have a conversation. In reality, you're right from a cardinal perspective. If you want to reason things out from a cardinal perspective, you're totally right. At least from the facts that you have and the things that we know, you're right. But I'm not talking to you from a cardinal level. I'm talking to you from a spiritual level. I'm talking to you the fact is that God is a spirit. In John 4, 24, God, it, clearly God said it. God is a spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. His word is true. Now, if you go from a cardinal perspective, even from dealing with the Bible, Brother Addison, a cardinal mind is sit there and say, this is written by man. And, and, and man has all the faults and all the issues and, and, and that, 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 how can I trust that? And, and, and as long as you stay at the cardinal level, as long as you're gonna accept these, or look at things from a cardinal perspective, then, you, then you're right. And I can't, I can't justify it from a cardinal perspective. You know what I mean? When you're having a conversation with somebody, you can't, it's, to try to discuss something that wants to stay at a level that you're not coming from, you will not be understood. And, and they will have the right to say, based on my understanding, based on the facts that I have, uh, you don't make sense. And remember the scripture said, the, 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 for the preacher of the gospel is foolish to those that are wise, isn't it? Yes. So one point is it, it's a spiritual level. If, at least you, if you don't put the spiritual component into your study, into your walk, into your ministry, into your profession, and then deal with people from a cognitive perspective, you're going to always be off. Um, and what, what really got me yesterday, man, I sent you a video, <laughs> TikTok real quick, where this uh, evangelical preacher or pastor or prophet or whatever he had, he sat there and said, we got to watch, we got to watch for the governor of Florida. I saw God gave me a vision of two palm trees. I don't know if you heard that. I said it to you yesterday. Get a chance to look at it. He said, he said, I, I saw two palm trees. One palm tree was in California and one palm tree was in Florida. And that palm tree in California was old Ronald Reagan. Yeah. And then he told me that one over here, that, that palm tree in Florida, you know, 
and it's, 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 we got to keep an eye on this guy. And, and I sit there and said, man, you did the same thing with the last election before that. Mm-hmm. Where you sit there and told evangelical Christian people who believe in God, trust in God, trust in you to equip them to 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 do the work in the ministry, and you trying to tell somebody, well, this man is here because he's called by God, and now we're gonna you're gonna vote for him because God has ordained him to be the president of the United States. And you sit there and say, Lord, pop, believers, you that's why I guess when they talk about politics and, 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 and our faith doesn't mix, is because when we sit there and put our when we try to interject and influence other believers, calling somebody a prophet, because you you know when they when they said for the second term election, they 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 prophesize that this God, this man, excuse me, yeah, small G, tell you the truth, this man will be elected because God told me he's supposed to be elected. And good joke on Mocha. I'm glad that when he didn't get elected, that meant if you go by the scriptures, even from a cardinal level of a spiritual level, you're a false prophet. You are a false prophet. Because you said, God said that this man's supposed to be elected and he wasn't. So that makes you a false prophet. And then you're gonna come back. This one all of them came back saying, I think you probably heard some of them. Well, I missed it. I missed it. Yeah, I missed it. But no, but but scripture says if you go by the scripture, if you go by the law, you're a false prophet. Technically he was to kill you. <laughs> you're a false prophet. But we're not gonna kill you. I mean, at the same time, we're going to let you know, don't be sitting there trying to tell people what God didn't tell you to tell people. Well, don't sit God there and try did. to, huh? I said, their God did. There, there you go. Well, and that's, that's, the, that's the thing people as believers you got to watch out for when you do those things and you, you doing it. And then you and then you got to sit at yourself, okay, how do you allow the, the, the fruits that a person is bearing, bad fruit, and you still believe God sent them. And 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 I'm asking, I'm just those who ever listen to this and pass on to somebody else, tell them don't do that. Just don't don't get into politics like that. I know you said to say we should influence, we don't we don't influence by saying that God a day uh politicians. Don't don't do that. Don't do that. It's it just it just it makes does. us look stupid. It just makes us look ignorant, it and work. and and it just pass on the same junk that people use our faith for the slave trade. They use our faith for the Spanish Inquisition. They lose. They use the uh, faith for the uh, Crusade, the the sale of witch hunt, the 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 just racism. Period. You have used the faith. And all it does is make people say, well, a tree is known by its fruit. And we're based on what I'm saying from a cognitive perspective, and even from a spiritual perspective, uh, we, we talk about two different beliefs, two different gods. You know, what God said to love one another. He told you to love your neighbor as yourself. And yet you espouse and teach your children to hate people, to murder people. Knowing that even the Old Testament said, thou shalt not kill, and yet you you endorsed it or you were salad toward it when people sit there and did all the lynching and killing, even a modern day lynching, where police officers sit there and kill somebody over a traffic stop, all of a sudden became a deadly situation. How many times it said you resist an arrest? And, and you know that you saw what happened to him last week. You resist an arrest and you sitting there the one hugging on the person, twisting their arms, making them feel bad, and they think they, they aren't supposed to move. Give me a break. So the bottom line is that as believers, we have to stay at the spiritual level because our weapons, Brother Addison, and oh, Sean, are at the spiritual level, the weapons of our warfare, because this is spiritual warfare. And if people don't know that, guess what? You're there. Uh, so what I did was, 
is used this this starting scripture here. It's uh, let's see here. This one right here, and 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 you know, if you want, you can read it for us. Read it all the way to uh, eight. Let me see. No, uh, seven. Excuse me. Okay, ten to seven. Yes, sir. I mean, one, one to seven. One so through now, seven. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence am based among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with the, with the confidence wherewith I think to be bold against some which think of us as if we walk according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do ye look on, on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. Yes, sir. You know, the thing I liked about the fact is, do do look at the outward appearance. It always recognize that if we're going to deal with uh, the spiritual warfare, we're going to deal with the weapons that he has given us <laughs> because we are in a warfare. But if we sit there and judge things, that, the way I look at that saying outward appearance, and you could tell me it's that different, it's really talking about from a cardinal level to a spiritual level. Because my when I look at some outward appearance, I'm using my five senses. But when I'm when I'm talking about the spirit, I'm using a spiritual sense. And 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 that's the that's I think that's what he's trying to say is don't look at the outward appearance. Because God looks at the heart. And and God looks at the fact is that there's a spiritual component in our life. And we need to be able to operate from that spiritual component. We recognize we got different strongholds. Every last one of us have have or had strongholds in our life. And the only way we can do that is pull those strongholds down by the obedience of Christ. And what is the obedience of Christ? Well, for those who don't know, he gave us a commandment. He said, a new commandment I given to you in John 13, 34. He said, a new commandment I given to you that you love one another. As I have loved you, did you also love one another? And verse 35 said, and men will know that you are my disciples for the love that you have for one another. And and people, if you're not showing love for your neighbor, love for your fellow brother, then you, you, you're not operating from the obedience of Christ. You're not operating from the obedience of God. And the scripture we're going to talk about today is the fact is that there's a cultural war going on and I'm not going to talk about the 20, 2023 culture war from that perspective. I'm going to talk about that perspective of a, court, a cultural war that started from the beginning. And this is what I'm talking about. First, I'm come off this uh, sharing. And, and this is, uh, it's picking up based on what we talked about last week. And yet I wanted to use the scriptures that we used from last week uh, so people can read it. Uh, my type, my topic, and I'm bringing up the topic today. <laughs> Ooh, people! It's see, you know, the reason we got sometimes use the we got to bring up the uh, use of scripture because we one of the friends said yesterday that's the problem with Christians they don't read the scriptures, right? The Bible said the studies show your self approval to God. A lot of cases we're sitting there continuously depending on somebody else to be able to teach us the scriptures. And all they can do is give you from their perspective. In a lot of cases, they move from spiritual to cardinal and, 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 and sometimes get into spooky stuff. You need to know the word for yourself. 
So the reason that we talked about Cain and Abel last week. So we're going to talk about Cain using the scriptures to go with it. Amen. It's the Lord's Prayer. So God bless you. Hey, one of the things we all want to do is to remind each other to pray. And Christ gave us a manner into how we should pray. And it's not to say you do this verbatim, but encouraging all of us to put the Lord's Prayer, the components of the Lord's Prayer in your daily prayer. I like to just go ahead and just include that verbatim, then incorporate the things that I want to pray about uh, before or after. In most cases before, I mean, most cases I do the Lord's Prayer first, then I go and do the things that I want to pray about people I want to pray about, issues I'm concerned about uh, afterward, but use, but carrying those components in first. And, and that's what we're going to show you real quick is look at the Lord's Prayer and remember that uh, it's something that was taught by Christ to do, which is the Lord's Prayer. So what we got here, you get into Matthews chapter 6, starting verse 9 is what I like to use. And it says, after this manner, therefore pray ye. So you're praying after this manner, not verbatim, but after this manner. Our Father, which are in heaven, A, I'm given a certain direction where I'm praying to, and I'm going to a specific person, God, and a personal relationship or parental relationship between God and me. As well as the fact is it says our Father, meaning all of us preach, approach God as the Father, as a parent before you. You are a child. I mean, this think about this scripture is basically saying, this is saying you are a child of God. To be able to say he's your father, that means you are a child of God, hallelujah. <laughs> That's a blessing by itself, ain't it? You get revelation, I can read it over and over again. I did this and this and this to talk about it. I did say it's a personal relationship, but here I'm just saying is, he's called, you're saying I'm a child of God. That my father is in heaven and I am his child. We are his children. That's why we should love one another too. Amen. God bless you. I don't, but I declare it in there. Hallowed be that name, meaning to glorify his name, glorify who he is. You know, I know you don't, we don't speak Hebrew, but the fact is, we're saying this, we are, we're glorifying our Father, which is in heaven. Give us, he said, no, then he got here, verse 10. Thy kingdom come, meaning he's not only my father, but he's my king. He's the one that rules over me. He's the one that sits on my throne. Amen. That's when they say, if you confess your mouth, the Lord Jesus and Yeshua, you're saying there's a lordship, there's a kingship over my life, over your life. Thy kingdom come. Meaning the kingdom, there's in the kingdom, there's a king, which is God. And then the kingdom itself is what we walk in, what we live in, what we reside in. The kingdom is in us. <laughs> We're not talking about, the, you know, in the natural world, there's kingdoms and governments and everything else. We're talking about in the spiritual realm, the kingdom of God is in us. Amen. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Some people sit there and try to say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, brother, what are you, what are you trying to say? I'm saying is that the same will that God has in heaven for us, the same will God has in heaven for anybody that's in heaven, he wants that same will to be done for us in earth. God, Christ said, Yeshua said that he was going to prepare a place for us. Some call it a mansion, right? So what I guarantee you that the mansion or the will or the place is a place where we are living an abundant life. But John 10, 10, Christ said, 
the Satan comes or the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, Christ said, I come to give life more abundantly. So the will of God is for us to have abundance living. And I'm not talking about a prosperity message because it's not, money does not necessarily, does in most cases, give you abundant living. Because we have people that have been rich and powerful and killed themselves, living miserable, always worrying about something. So it's not the money. So it's a, the, the, the ability to have this life where you can enjoy yourself. But it's definitely not poor either. Come on now. All right? But the bottom line is that thy will, his will, be done in her as it is in heaven. And I like the fact is that his will for you is to be a child of God. His will is for you to love one another. His will is for you not to do the commandments wrong, meaning thou shall not kill, and yet you got people taught in church, some ministry endorsing it, endorsing it <laughs> to kill somebody. You got family members teaching your children to hate. And the Bible say you hate is a murderer, and a murderer has no life, eternal life abiding in them. So we got generations and generations of people who sit there and taught and are teaching their children to hate. We got people sitting there putting their strength in their flesh instead of in the will of God. This should be, when you talk about nationalism, when you talk about uh, uh, supremacy, whether black supremacy or white supremacy or any other type of supremacy, if it's not in the will of God, it's not in the will of God. And it doesn't justify anything that you do if you're not doing the will of God. Just take it for the, for the will of word. He says here, verse 11, give us this day. And what I like about the fact is he said yesterday is gone basically. I'm, you, he said when you come to me in the prayer, the manner is the prayer, you're talking about this day. Not talking about yesterday. You're talking about this day. And the scripture said that tomorrow is not promised. So we're not talking about tomorrow. Because the scripture says sufficient today is the evil thereof. So we're, we're focused on today. We pray daily. Today. Amen. So if you pray today, if you haven't prayed, pray. Pray the Lord's Prayer. And he said, and, and, lead, and, he said, and forgive us of our debts. As we forgive our debt towards the understanding, if you catch the whole point there is we should be able to forgive one another as we want to be forgiven for ourselves. So you want to be able to do that. That's what he's telling us to do. Forgive us as we forgive other people. And lead us not into temptation. <laughs> I mean, especially the temptation to sin. He wants the leaders to do his will. Sometimes we're going to be tested to do his will. Christ was tested in the wilderness to do his will. And Christ was able to come all the tests before him. And God is saying he will not put anything on you that you can't bear. So don't lead us in temptation. I ask you, Lord, I ain't ready. Don't lead me into temptation. I'm ready for it. Lead me into the ones that I can pass the test on. Amen. <laughs> but deliver from evil. Now that's the big piece, isn't it? <laughs> Always seeking to be delivered from evil because satan can just john 10 10 again satan come to steal kill and destroy you know i lost my i lost a nephew a good young man i don't care what people sit there and try to talk about what would define good good is a good heart not willing to want to hurt people not willing to want to do bad things to people it was shot and killed. Senseless death. That's why it's important for us to pray daily. That's why it's important for us to ask him to deliver us from evil. Because there's enough evil out there. The young man named Tyree that was killed a few weeks ago by people that's called peacekeepers. By people who enforce whatever policy they think they're enforcing. But the policy, the writing, was not to do that. Not to beat a man senseless. Not to beat a man for a base or a traffic stop. 
and not to glorify it, not to take pictures of the victim and send it to other people. Be the man senseless. Even the man sitting there saying, y'all yeah, doing too much here now, wait a minute. He's, I mean, he's even trying to read. He's the most calm person in the whole group. And yet they still got angry. That's why it's important to pray. <laughs> Lord, deliver me from evil. Huh? And he said, then he wraps it up again and said, for thine is the kingdom. Meaning, I want to be in your kingdom. So your kingdom doesn't have racism. Your kingdom doesn't have abortion. Your kingdom doesn't have adultery. Your kingdom. I'm in his kingdom. Your kingdom does not just focus on abortion, but your kingdom focuses on life from the womb unto the grave. Lives matter in the womb. Lives matter in life. And we cannot forget that. We have Oh, life and it's through the life cycle of people to love one another in his kingdom and his power that matters not the power of a gun not the power of numbers but the power of God that operates in your life and in my life. Amen? And the glory belongs to him, not in us. A lot of us sit there and try to get our own glory. A lot of us get our own praise. And the world try to give you praise. In reality, the only praise that matters to him, your Father which is in heaven, forever amen make it so see lot glory to god because verse 14 says for if you give me a uh, trespass you have also forgive you but if you give me not the trespasses neither would your father give your trespasses we want to be forgiven and we forgive for our benefit not the person but for our benefit the Lord's prayer and his will be done in earth as it is in heaven and in his will first first Timothy 2 4 is who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth the knowledge of the truth to be saved all men does all men will be saved right? that that's a that's a choice that he gives all men but for us is to follow his will and if you ever give one another man hey i think you're going to enjoy the study that we got it's deep because i'm talking about the fact that there's a cultural war that even exists in 2023 but started all the way from the beginning when the first two human beings were born from adam and eve cain killed his brother abel so we're going to talk about that and we're going to say is that is that a pattern and there has been a pattern for men for mankind throughout the beginning to even 2023 and that saying is it must stop it must stop that's what we want to be able to focus on that's what the the title is, is all about so i hope you enjoy the study I'm going to send it out in segments. This is the live session, but I'm going to send it out. I'm going to cut it up, like I said, in about within the 30 minute round, okay? But I hope you, I know you're going to enjoy this. <laughs> it's a blessing. And remember, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let's go into that study now. God bless you. Hey, I see you. Uh, when I see you, <laughs> and I know. That is a blessing to do his will. God bless, and I will see you later. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We 
Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.